COVID-19 is the disease which is caused by the new virus which is circulating through our community. It primarily affects the lungs and the heart through direct infection. The immune system responds to that infection with a sometimes robust response that can lead to symptoms of severe shortness of breath and even require respiratory support with a ventilator. Most patients can recover, but patients who are either immunocompromised or elderly are at higher risk. Most people don't have cardiac involvement at that point, but later in the disease, if it becomes more severe, then the heart function can decrease. The heart function decreases sometimes because of the systemic inflammatory response to the virus, and in some people, because of direct viral infection in the heart caused myo causing myocarditis. There are two dominant cardiac issues. The biggest, say 80-90%, is older people who are now on a ventilator, who have respiratory failure, and now they've developed heart failure. That is occurring in the context of people with hypertension, people with coronary artery disease, who have decreased reserve capacity. And it may be that the medicines that we use to support blood pressure are actually leading to uh, some of the deterioration in heart function in that context. That's a different group people with structural heart disease than the young person who comes in with an acute chest pain syndrome, short of breath, and that may be the myocarditis presentation. At the end of both of those pathways could be myocarditis, but it, early on it looks like in the older group it's probably the effect of underlying structural heart disease, response to cytokines, and in the younger group it's, it may well be um, a primary myocarditis. So today, for many people who present with heart failure in the context of COVID-19 infection, we don't know if the heart failure is related to myocarditis or to a response to systemic inflammation. There's no evidence that any of the commonly used medications for any cardiovascular disorders in the United States will put you at heightened risk of the infection or the consequences of infection specifically ACE inhibitors and angiotensin receptor blockers, which work on the uh, ACE1 uh, receptor, are not going to impact the course or risk of COVID-19 infection. In patients who are at home who have been diagnosed with COVID-19 infection, but who do not feel short of breath or have low blood pressure, they should continue taking their blood pressure medicines. In patients who have more symptoms, they should consult with their physician. There are a number of really exciting research directions that we are currently engaged in. At this point, it's gratifying to see institutions like the American Heart Association and the National Institutes of Health stepping up to promote research into COVID-19 cardiovascular impact, both at the population level and at the, the individual person level. There's going to be a huge impact in the next one to two years from this investment. First, we acknowledge this is a stressful time. It's a stressful time for everyone, including healthcare workers and, and people who are in the community because of the economic and social impact of this disease, even if you don't have it yourself. And that can put people at, at heightened risk for all sorts of stress-related illnesses. I think that mindfulness, uh, taking care of yourself, trying to maintain an exercise regimen if you had been before are key to maintaining uh, health. And even though we are instructed now to avoid gathering in large groups, maintaining social contact through the internet, through telephone, is really important that we don't lose contact and become uh, depressed or otherwise isolated because of this um, uh, new illness. Now as before, if people develop chest pain or shortness of breath, they should seek medical attention, first by calling their healthcare provider or if it's severe, 911. Shortness of breath is very common, and only a minority of people today will actually have COVID-19 infection who develop shortness of breath. All of the common reasons, for example, structural lung and heart disease, are still there and need to be considered that's why it's important to contact your local physician or your usual care provider if you develop these symptoms.